Because 
Spirit. You are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. All my oh, life, Lord. you have been you faithful. Jesus. All my life, you have yes, been Lord. so, so Thank good. You to know, Father. Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Your mercy Thank never you. failed me. Thank you, Lord. All my days, yes, Lord. I've been held Thank in you, your hand.
all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Spirit of the living God, we come before you another time. We thank you for your love, Lord. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your goodness towards us, Lord. We thank you for bringing us safely to your house this morning. We thank you, God, for being so good to us, Lord. You woke us up in our right mind this morning. And that, Lord, we are grateful. Spirit of the living God, as we come before you this morning, to lift you up, to honor you, to give you glory, to give you praise. We pray, Spirit of the living God, that you will be, hallelujah, in our midst. We pray, Spirit of the living God, that you will take control of each and every one of us. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you, Lord. We know that you are here, but we are inviting you a little closer. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will fall afresh on us today. We pray, God, that you will mold us, you will melt us. You will make us into your likeness, Lord. If we were to tell God we need you, we surely need you now. We pray, God, that you will be the one, Lord God, to moderate for us today, Lord. Let self be slain, Lord, and we will see you at work. We pray, God, that your presence will be evident in everything that is said and done, Lord. Knowing that, God, we can't even walk without you holding our hand. Precious Lord, we pray that you will lead us on today, God. We pray, Spirit of the living God, that you will take control, Lord. Because self is a complete failure this morning. And so in your hands we place today's service. Remember those who are not here today, Lord. You know for the different reasons, God. Some may be grieving, Lord. Hallelujah. Some, Lord God, may lost the love that they had for you. Some may be sick, Lord, but whatever the situations are, Lord, we pray that you will minister to them. Spirit of the living God, take control today, Lord. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will flow, hallelujah. The anointing will flow through this place, Lord. We pray, God, that you will touch, Lord God, to the utmost. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch every individual in your midst today. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will meet the needs of your people. Spirit of the living God, you know the different situations, God. But Lord, you can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And so in the name of Jesus, we bring them at the foot of the cross this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus that burdens, hallelujah, will be lifted and conquered in the name Lord. We pray. Be 
four, he was king of all the world. So everyone stand for the reading of God's holy word. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, we are with you, love us, even when we were dead in sin, and with you, we are with us, we are with us, we are with us. By grace ye are saved, and have raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the grace of God. This is the word of the Lord that I am saying. Thanks be to God. As we turn to one of him to 139, I found the hymn of 465 at Calvary. Here is I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for him for me he died and called me.
Glory be to the King. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. The Holy Spirit is here with us today. Let us make him welcome with a clap offering. I acknowledge the presence of our pastor, Pastor Howard Forrest and his family. And I bring greetings to you, brethren, in the mighty name of Jesus and unsaved friends. Greetings. Praise God. Please listen to the following notices and reminders. The Biennial Post Assembly Ministry Ministers Conference will be held on Sunday, September. Seven at 41 Old Road, commencing at 9 a.m. All bishops and ministers are required to register with their parish administrative assistant by August 31st. All national workers are also required to be in attendance at the minister's conference. The Senior Citizen Ministry will celebrate the month of September as Senior Citizen Month. The launch this year will be at the Montego Bay Church of God of Prophecy on Sunday, September 8th. September 8th to 15th will be Senior Citizens Week. The 13th will be shut in visitation day. The Sunday School Department of this local church continues to collect funds for their back to school drive. The Sunday School Department is also empowering all those who have outstanding tickets to come in with payment. The hunt has sent his greetings and his love to us. Please keep him in your prayers as he continues to pray for us. These are the notices and reminders. Please bear them in mind. And if you need any clarification, you can see one of the peer representatives of the church for further assistance. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Same to you. Let's come to the worship of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Continue to bless his name. Praise the Lord. This time we'll come for the tithes and offerings. And we'll ask uh, for the Christian to collect offerings for us. As we see this song, that love prevails. That love that will be the name. The blood prevails, the blood of the reason, power to save. Yeah, yeah. 
Bless the Lord. Please bow your head, everyone. Eternal God and everlasting Father, once more we, your people, we humbly approach your mercy seat, dear Lord. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you all the glory and honor, dear Lord, that you deserve. Dear Lord, as we humbly approach your mercy seat, dear Lord, as we tender this offering, offering unto you, dear Lord, dear Lord, we pray, dear Lord, that, that whatsoever use it may be put to, it may be to a blessing, dear Lord, both to the church, to the community, and to each and every one in and around the, 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 the living area, dear Lord. And I pray, dear Lord, that you just bless it, dear Lord, anoint it, dear Lord. And I pray, dear Lord, that you just have your way in today in your holy and righteous name, I pray. Amen. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I pray to bless His holy name. Praise the Lord. 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 the Lord.
seems as if I'm going under.
I greet all you brethren, the little children, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Greetings. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. We're here today on a, a theme. When mercy walk in. Yes, the Lord. Amen. All of us today are benefactors of mercy. Of mercy. Amen. Yes, sir. Mercy is God's unmerited favor. It means that we did not deserve it, but he gave it to us, just the same. And no man that ever walked this earth has ever deserved God's mercy. Amen. Amen. And so today we are basking in that full and free favor that God has seen fit to bestow upon us. Amen. So that today we can be called sons of God. Amen. Sons and daughters. Amen. Of a king. And when we think about the goodness of Jesus, praise God, and, and what he has done for me, no wonder the songwriter says that my soul cries out hallelujah. Praise God and thank God for saving me. This morning the devil tried everything in his power to stop us from being in his house, in God's house this morning. He tries everything. But we are here. Thank you, Lord. None we are here to give God the glory, the honor, and the, praise. and the praise. He put all kind of obstacles in our way to stop us. He made some of us reach halfway and have to turn back. And then in coming, he put all the obstacles in the way. But when God is on our side, praise God, then nothing can stand before us. Amen. Amen. He made a way when there seems to be no way. I am not going to be preaching today, but I'm going to be more like teaching and allow the Holy Spirit to lead. Amen. We are here this morning and the theme has already been made known unto us. When mercy walk in. And I want to just add a little to that today and to say we are at a place of grace. Amen. At a place of grace. Turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 5 and let me just look on a few verses there. Verse 1 says, therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And verse 3 says, and not only so, but we glorify, we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Hallelujah. By the Holy Ghost which is given to us. 
For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And verse 9 says, much more than being just now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Amen. Amen. We'll stop here for a while. In Romans, the book that Paul has written to the Romans and to us, praise God, in the previous four chapters, Paul has spent intense time trying to explain what he means by being righteous or righteousness. In essence, Paul has described righteousness as God's character. He first uses the word in Romans by qualifying it with God. In Romans chapter 1, and in verse 17, praise God. And if we can find that in our Bibles, praise God, you will see what I'm talking about in verse 17 of Romans chapter 1. He says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written that the just shall live by faith. And if we look on the verse uh, before that one, we see where Paul says that for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And God, Paul is saying to us, praise God, in Romans 1 and verse 17, that he qualifies righteousness to God. Amen. Because righteousness is the character of God. Amen, Amen church. Hallelujah. God cannot look at sin. He knows that sin. He is the only righteous one. Follow me here, church. And God has revealed his character to us, uh, praise God, in his righteousness. Thank God for his mercy today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And because uh, of his mercy, I can experience uh, the righteousness of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now God has revealed his own character through righteousness and as believers today we receive this righteousness by faith I and mean, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying here church let's not be distracted praise God but let us look into the word of God and at the beginning of chapter 5 Paul starts Praise God by having been justified by faith. Praise God by the righteousness of God. We have been justified by God revealing Himself to us. Praise God, we have been justified. Hallelujah! Glory be to God. Praise God. At the beginning of 
chapter 5, hear what Paul says. Therefore, being justified, Sister Grant, by faith, we have what? Peace with God. So by God revealing his righteousness to us, praise God, we have accepted his righteousness by faith unto faith, believing in him. And the word that Paul is using here, praise God, is in the passive voice. Paul is talking about uh, the circumstances of the life of the believer. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I believe today that it's because of the grace of God that's why we are here. Because many of us should have uh, been forgotten about. Uh, many of us should have uh, been dead uh, and buried uh, and our bones white. Uh, but God's grace has kept us this morning. Yes. Amen. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. So Paul is talking about uh, the circumstance uh, of the believer as we believe in the righteousness of God and we accept and we walk from faith to faith. Amen. Amen. And there are those who have been justified as believers. We have been made righteous. Praise God. Hallelujah. And this word or this phrase righteousness of God is one Greek word which has two English translations. It means, uh, praise God, righteousness, uh, and it means uh, justice, justice. And so we have been made justified by the righteousness of God. And I want us to get it today, church. Praise God. I want us for it to sit deep and to understand that. That we are a recipient of God's favor. We are a recipient of his unmerited favor. Praise God. We did not deserve what Jesus has done for us. But thanks be to God that I am a recipient of the favor of God. Amen. 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 And so Paul makes it plain. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And while I was reading, praise God, I want to say, as I came across this analogy, praise God, it spoke of somebody who knew that they could swim. You, 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 if you know you can swim, praise God, you feel confident that if you step out in the pool or the water from this side, no matter how wide the breadth of the pool may be, you're confident that you will make it across the other side because you can swim. And this is it with us church. Praise God whom God has justified, whom God has called and made righteous. We have been justified by God's righteousness. And because we know that we are righteous people, we know we're going to make it over on the other side. Amen. Amen. Praise God. By faith, we are pressing, Brother Buckley. By faith, we are sitting across, Brother. By faith, we must make it because God has made it possible for us to cross over to the other side. Come on, church. I believe we should understand what I'm saying here today. Amen. That we are justified. We are made righteous. We are made to look like God. And one day we will experience the full glory that God has in store for us. I'm getting over there by the mercies of God. I'm getting over there by the grace of God. I'm getting across.
ask because God favored me. Amen. Amen. And so Paul makes plain that he wants the statement in verse 1 of chapter 5 to be understood in the context of what has gone before. Praise God. We can't make it across the pool on our own. Praise God. Hallelujah. We must first learn how to swim because we can't walk on water. Amen. And if we're going to get across, we have to learn how to paddle our way across. We have to learn how to hold our breath. We have to know when to release in order to be light as we float upon the water. And so we can't carry all kind of things in our hearts and make it over there. We must get light. We must get light to paddle over to the other side. And so Paul makes it clear Praise God to the Roman Christians. And he made it clear to you and I today. Praise God that therefore being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God. Peace with God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the peace that we have this morning is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Let's move on. Praise God. Praise God. He qualifies what he means by claiming that they have been justified. Paul says that we are justified by faith. Amen. And this comes as no surprise. Because his whole point in the previous chapter, in chapter 4 and verse 3, somebody find that for me and read it. Praise God. Paul says we are justified by faith and this don't come as no surprise. Go on, Sister Grant, read for me. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God. Amen. Praise God. So, Abraham was qualified because he believed. Amen, church. I don't think you're there with me. Abraham was qualified because he believed. Because the scripture says it. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So you cannot be called by God and don't believe. You cannot be walking with God and don't believe. Amen. You cannot say you accept him and don't believe. Praise God. And you can't go to heaven and don't believe. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You must believe that he died for you. You must believe that he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders. Amen. You must believe that he's fighting for you. You must believe in the word because the word was made flesh and the word us, uh, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God, uh, full of grace, full of mercy, full of favor, full of truth. Amen. And so you must believe. And so Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him yes. for righteousness. Amen. His whole point is. In chapter 4, that Abraham was justified by faith. Believers in Christ experience the same process 
of being justified as Abraham was justified. Praise God. We too are justified by our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our most fundamental defining shape is that we have been justified by faith. And that being said, that is not all there is to say. One of the things that Paul does not let us forget is that the Christian life is a challenging life. Amen. It's hard sometimes, don't it, church? Amen. I, I, I don't think I have some people before me who knows what it is to serve God to hardship. Because the devil fight on every hand. He tried to stop the progress of the children of God. He tries to stop the progress of the church. So Paul made it clear that the Christian journey is not an easy journey. Not an easy life. It's not as simple as we think. Praise God. It's not just to receive salvation and believe on a desert done. It's not like that. Because the moment you say you believe, you start to get some different fight from the enemy. I mean, the Bible tells us that the kingdom of God suffers violence and violence by force from the day that the church was established, from the day that Christ came, the devil has been fighting. Herod wanted to kill him because the devil knows what was in store for the church. No wonder Jesus says that upon this rock I will be my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Do I have some prevailing Christians in the house today who knows how to stand upon the devil? The Christian life is not just about receiving salvation and move on. The, the Christian life is about growth and transformation. Yes. The Christian life is about growth. From the day you plant something, you plant it in tender, and you nurture it, and you watch it grow. It's not going to stay at one stage all the time. Because if it stay at one stage, you yourself might even pull it up and throw it away. Amen. Praise God. So the Christian life uh, is about growth uh, and transformation. And no wonder Paul says, be not conformed uh, to this world, uh, but be he transformed uh, by the renewing uh, of the mind. It's about growing uh, and changing uh, as you accept the righteousness of God. Uh, to be more and more like Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And this is what Paul uh, will begin to describe uh, as he tells us uh, by whom also in verse 2 uh, we have access by faith uh, into this grace uh, wherein we stand and rejoice uh, in the hope of the glory of God. And he says in verse 3 not only so but what? Because the Christian life is not always easy. We have to learn to glory what? In tribulations. Amen. Praise God. Because when we glory in tribulations, we know that tribulation does what? It work at what? Patience and patience what? Experience and experience what? Hope of making it over on the other side as we swim on the ocean of, of life. And so we are not called and left alone. We are empowered to grow. Amen. Praise God. Not by our own strength. Not by our own character. 
Not by our own personal discipline. Because some of us are a little bit disciplined than some are, others are. Praise God, but it's not left up to us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To be empowered and to grow. We are going to be helped by the Holy Spirit who has been keeping us from the day that we accept by faith and is able to carry us through until the end. And so, although we need personal discipline and a good character, praise God, hallelujah, then the Holy Spirit will begin to shape us and to make us into what God wants us to be. The process of transformation will begin, praise God, when we believe and accept the mercy, the grace, the unmerited favor of God. And so we have been given the shape of the character of God, which is righteousness, when we believe. Let me say that again. We have been given the shape of God. Remember that God's character is righteousness. And so the moment we believe we have been given the character of God. We have been shaped into his likeness. Praise God. Uh, somebody with me today. We are getting to be more and more like Jesus. And our starting point for growth assures our end point. Praise God. We start as righteous and so we will end in the righteousness of God. And Paul says that we have been justified. We are righteous. And so we will be righteous in saying this. Paul is not discounting that there is a long way for each of us to travel in becoming righteous. Praise God. And some of us journey is longer than some to reach that end point. And that's why some of us die before some. Amen. Because Jesus knows when we reach that point of perfection. And so the journey between our lives may be different. Praise God. But the end point is what is important, church. Amen. Amen. In becoming like Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But we are those who know how to become righteous. Because we have been made fit. For the righteousness of God. And so we are walking. In our tribulation seas. Because we believe that God. Will carry us through. Amen. Praise God. And we have been made fit. By his righteousness. I'm coming down. And so because. We have this. Justification by faith. We have peace. Firstly, it gives us peace with God. And this is the fundamental gift of having been made righteous. Is that we are no longer God's enemies. Before, we were his enemies. You know what? Sin is the biggest enemy of the cross. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Praise God. But because of his righteousness, because of his mercy, because of his favor, we can find peace with God. And that's the fundamental gift. We are no longer God's enemy. We are at peace with him. And Paul will go on to speak about how before we were justified we were God's enemies in verse 10. Let's look at that. 
of chapter 5. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You see his mercy coming out before our eyes today. Because Paul is saying, for if when we were without God and his son, it means we were enemies of Jesus Christ. Of God. But yet still, he reconciled us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. By the death of his son. Much more being reconciled. We shall be what? Saved. We talk about the form of righteousness. We talk about the starting point. We talk about the shapingness of being like God. Praise God. And then we reach the end result. We shall be saved by his life. Amen. And so Paul speaks about how we who are justified have peace with God and the enmity, the conflict between humanity and God is over once humans are made righteous. It was man who sinned. Amen. The animals never sinned. It was man who sinned. It was man who caused sin to be upon the earth. And then it was man who caused righteousness to reign. Hallelujah. Can I see the hands of righteous people in the house today who believe that Jesus came and he died for us and he gave us life everlasting. Only if we believe and receive the gift of God. Amen. And as I close, because when we were made righteous, we are made to be like God. When we were not righteous, we were sinners, according to verse 8. People whose orientation was to reject God. We don't want to have nothing to do with God. That was our orientation to abuse God. And Paul Praise God. He's saying sin is more than the transgression of the law. It is more than doing something wrong. Praise God. Sin is a power that attacks God. A power that is at war with God. And so humans who are sinners is at war with God. Which is the opposite of righteousness. And so thank God today that because of his mercy, we are not at war with him thank you, Lord. anymore. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. We can find peace, joy, happiness, love. Hallelujah. In the Lord today. I am so glad today that I have accepted the Lord as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm not at war with him anymore. Praise God. I am at peace with my Savior. I'm at peace with God. Not because of my righteousness, but because of his mercy towards me. Thank you, Lord. I am a participant. Praise God. In that ongoing war against sin. I am helping to fight against sin. Are you helping to fight against sin? Amen. Amen. Have you found that peace with your maker? Have you found that peace with your God? I am a participant in righteousness today. I'm a participant in the march of the goodness of God because of his grace and mercy. And once we are made righteous, praise God, however, 
We are on God's side. Amen. We are not enemies of God. We have peace with him. We have his peace. Praise God because someone made it for us. Hallelujah. When he came down and he took upon himself our sins, he made peace with God on our behalf. And so we can stand in the free and full salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the one who allowed us to have access to the state of grace that we are in today. Amen. It's not by works that any man should boast. Paul says if it was so, he himself could have boasted because Paul knew what he had done and his learning capacity. But Paul says it's not by works that any man should boast. But it's the gift of God. It's the grace of God. It's the unmerited favor that God has showered upon us so that we can be called sons and daughters. Christ is the one who has allowed us access to the state of the grace that we are now in. We are recipients of a remarkable gift. Amen. A remarkable gift. We are no longer under the power of sin, but we are in God's home. And we have access to God. When you are in somebody's home, I believe you have access to everywhere in the home. And you have access to the owner of the home. And because of God's grace this afternoon, we have access to God. And we are in his house. We are in his home. And so if we are in his home, we need to let him know that we are there. Praise God. We need to call upon him like the blind man. Praise God. When Jesus was passing, praise God, he heard the commotion. And he said, Jesus, have mercy upon me. So if you are in the house today and you are not in the home, Jesus is passing and you can cry out to him. And he will hear and he will heal and he will set free. Praise God. We have gained entrance to God's domain. What a wonderful place to be. Praise God. What a wonderful place to be in the house of God. We have gained entrance to God's domain and we have done this not because we are worthy of it, not because we have forced our way in, but because Jesus Christ has made it possible for you and I. And Jesus is the door, praise God, to which we enter. And the theme today was a place of grace when mercy walked in. When mercy walked in, you're in a place of grace. Hallelujah. Well, here what church is not every day the grace of God is going to be there. There's coming a time when this grace, this vexation will pass and the judgment of God will come and be unleashed upon the earth. No, you want to be in that place of grace. No, is the time because mercy has stepped in. Jesus, he wanted the TV saying in another language. He says, Jesus, come to save you. And because he come to save you and you're alive now, you're in a place where this saving grace is given to you. So accept it now. Because tomorrow 
Then it too late. So, mercy walked in and you can experience a place of grace. And as we close, I want to give an invitation to somebody to be. Praise God. Verse 6 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And verse 8 says, God commends his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What a thing. What a good thing. What a blessing. And you can experience that grace today. So if you're here this afternoon and you don't have that grace, that has been given to you yet. You have not accepted the peace of God. Now is the time to come to him. And verse 11 says, and not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement, the reconciliation, the change, praise God. Hallelujah, the new man, the righteousness of God. And so you're here today. Don't let today pass. Come to Jesus and give him a chance to live and to reign in your hearts. To be in a place of grace is a good place. But to accept the grace is even better. God bless you today. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Well said, Pastor. The grace. When mercy walked in, a place of grace. And Pastor already said it. If you don't have that grace, no is the time. Because tomorrow, promise to no man. The next minute, don't promise to no man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, great is thy faithfulness there. You know, in that glorious praise. Number 12. And after that, some going to ask. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to sing the two first verse. And we're going to extend that invitation. And then we we'll go back to the third verse. Sister Fox started from the third.
Remember the next minute. He's promised to no one. Hallelujah. You know, since we we last addressed a great friend, he's a child of God. Even though family members are mourning and we miss him. But you know one thing I am so glad for is because he was a part of the family of God. Amen. Last the morning, morning. It's a taxi friend. So you know tomorrow I promise to no one. So the grace is right here.
your word unto us, mighty God. I pray, mighty God, this minute that you will cover him under your blood. I pray you will cover everything that concerns him under your blood. Mighty God, I pray that every attack of the adversary, mighty God, will be set back in the name of Jesus Christ from over his life. We declare peace, we declare joy, mighty God. We declare happiness, mighty God, over his life today in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray his strength, mighty God, in you. Mighty God, you said that you are, the psalmist declared that you are our refuge and you are our strength. You are a very present help in times of trouble. Lord Jesus, we pray, mighty God, that we will run to you as our refuge. We will cry out to you, mighty God, for strength. Because sometimes, mighty God, we as your children, we are weak, mighty God. So I pray, mighty God, this evening that you will strengthen us, mighty God. You will just give us that surplus of strength, Heavenly Father God, when we need it. You are our very present help, mighty God, in trouble. This afternoon, mighty God, some of your children are in trouble. Mighty God, some come, mighty God, into your presence, mighty God, and they are troubled. They are worried, mighty God. But Lord, we understand and we know that wherever your presence is, there is fullness of joy. And if we only lose ourselves, Lord, and find it in you, then nothing will be impossible for you to do, mighty God, in our lives. I pray, mighty God, today for those who could not make it, mighty God, into your presence. All those shortings, mighty God, that we have, we present them before you, mighty God, today. And we pray that you will locate them even now. Mighty God, we pray that you will give them a touch even now. Mighty God, we pray that the Holy Spirit will minister unto their hearts even now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we cover ourselves under the blood of the Almighty God. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will have your way, mighty God, within us. You are such a good God. You send your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Mighty God, that we may receive a free salvation. Mighty God, I pray that those who have not received that free salvation, that free gift, Mighty God, today we'll surrender unto you, mighty God. I pray, Lord, that you will hear the cry of your children's heart, whatsoever it is, mighty God, this evening. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will hear our cry and that you will visit us, mighty God, in a tremendous way. I pray that you will give us a testimony, Lord, to testify about what you have done, mighty God, for us. Lord Jesus, we pray that we will exercise our faith, mighty God, and that we will trust in you, knowing and believing, Lord, that you can and you will come true for us. Lord Jesus, I pray for all those who are sick, mighty God, in your presence today. I pray, mighty God, that you will stretch forth your hands, Lord, and you will touch your children. No doubt in this season, Lord, the enemy is trying to afflict your children with all different kinds of problems. But Lord, we come against him this evening in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will touch us. Lord, just as the woman with the issue of blood, mighty God, she prays. And she said if she could just touch the hem of your garment. Mighty God, all we need is a little faith today as a mustard seed. And we shall be made whole. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will help us, Lord, not to come giving lip service, but to come into your presence, mighty God, with a heart that yearns for you. With a heart that sincerely, mighty God, seek you and need you, that you will pour out your spirit, mighty God, upon us. I pray, Lord Jesus, for a move, mighty God, in this church, in this atmosphere, Lord, that the community will hear, mighty God, and will run to you within the Father, God. I pray, Lord, that as we go, 
mighty God, today that you will go before us, Lord, that you will fly every chat and sneer of the adversary, Lord Jesus. I pray, mighty God, that you will bring us to our destination safely. And it is, if it is your will, mighty God, for us to come back into your temple, Lord, I pray that you will let your will be done. So is it on earth, let it be done in heaven. Thank you for who you are towards us, Lord. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you, another time, mighty God, for your faithfulness unto us. Some of us, we could have been otherwise minded. Some of us, we could have been on the road, walking up and down, don't, don't knowing ourselves. But because of your faithfulness and your grace towards us, Lord, you have given us a chance to be sober in this very minute. Bless us today, Lord. Sanctify us. Keep us. Mighty God, guard our hearts. Help us, mighty God, to put on the whole armor of you that we may be able to withstand, mighty God, in this evil time, mighty God. Thank you for hearing and answering our cry today, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.